Welcome to the RV Rental Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Maxson, and I'm thrilled to guide you through the journey of launching, growing, and managing a profitable RV rental business. Welcome to the RV Rental Secret Podcast. Today we have Gar Russell with us. He's the founder and CEO of Fireside RV Rental. Oh. Hi, Gar. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Stacey. Thanks for having me. So do you want to tell me a little bit about your business and what you do? Yeah. Yeah. So Fireside RV Rental, we are an RV rental management franchise opportunity. Uh, I guess is the shortest way I could put that. Basically, people give us their RVs and we rent them out on their behalf and uh, pass away for them to earn income without having to do all the work. That's a great idea. Now, do you find that people just give you your lease to rent out or are they kind of afraid to do that? You know, when we first started, there was definitely a lot of sales and convincing and negotiating that took place. You know, now that we're a nationwide brand, it's a lot easier definitely to, to enroll people in our program. But yeah, when we first started, you know, lots of questions from people. Well, what about insurance and what about marketing and what if this happens or that happens? And, you know, how much do you know about RVs? And can I use it? And all those different things, you know, that, that when we first started, but... Now it's now that we've been around for quite a handful of years and we have a bunch of locations, it's, it's a pretty pretty easy sale for us nowadays. Mm-hmm. But how many locations do you guys have right now? We have 21 or 20, I forget. We just launched another one. I, I think that was our 22nd that we just launched in Georgia, yeah. Okay. Are there certain areas throughout the country that you find are more popular? Yeah, there's definitely some hot spot, you know, where you get good year-round business as far as renters looking to rent. You know, Arizona is definitely a very popular area. California, so a lot of the West Coast. Florida is popular. And then we have some locations that, you know, they're seasonal, but they're still very high demand in season. For sure, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York. We're really looking heavily to launch locations in Utah, in more locations in Colorado. Very good. Um, now, kind of to rewind a little bit, like how did you get started in the RV rental industry? Yeah, you know, honestly, I kind of just fell into it. Probably like a lot of other people that are renting RVs, I'm assuming, you know, you don't you don't necessarily just buy an RV with the intentions of renting it out. I was taking my wife, I bought her an RV for our 10-year wedding anniversary, and we were out camping. We were living in Michigan at the time, so we were going to Lake Michigan camping, and we got our nice new RV, and we got it all set up at the Grand Haven State Park there. And, oh, no, not Haven State Park, but different park, Grand Haven. And I thought, all right, so here we are, we're camping. And... I don't know, minute and ten, my wife says, all right, I'm headed home, which we didn't left far away, so I figured she's going to go and I'm grab something. I was like, okay, love, see you when you get back. And she's like, oh, no, I'm not coming back. I'm like, you're not coming back. And long story short, she was about due with baby number four, and she was hot, miserable, and, and just, you know, had no desire to be out there. So first I thought, oh, my gosh, what did I do? I just want a camper. My wife doesn't want to camp. So being, you know, an entrepreneurial minded, I had me up on Craigslist, you know, within a couple hours. There we are. We had inquiries started coming in, and that's kind of when my entrepreneurial mind kicked in and started renting my RV. So you mentioned Craigslist. That means that you probably started this a while ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was 2016. Yeah, I hadn't heard of the, you know, like RV shooter or Rizzi, those guys yet. So yeah, it was Craigslist and is how I started the business. Very good. And do you list on... The different platforms now? Yeah, nowadays, yeah, we list uh, mainly RV shares are main platform we list on. You know, they're kind of B of this industry. So if you're looking at rent your RV out, definitely RV shares would be your first place to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like they've got the system down most out of everybody. And at the end of the day, it's about connecting the renter with the RV. So RV share is phenomenal at generating leads. You know, we do market on some of the other platforms as well, but I've seen a lot of those come and go here over the last several years. Yeah, I know personally when I got started out in my location in upstate New York, I always got the most reservations through RV share. Um, I had posted on Outdoorsy as well, but for some reason in our area, I don't know if that's where they were spending a lot of their marketing budget or what, um, but, you know, all of our inquiries came in through RV share. So that was always really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Getting to know RV share over the years, really, it's, it's shifted now. Now there's more leadership in place in RV share that's familiar with, you know, the vacation rental industry and stuff like that. But 
when they first started, I mean, they'll tell you they didn't know a lot about RV, but they know about marketing. So they are their marketing masters at generating leads. Now they've got a really good, well-rounded team there to be sure that knows about not just marketing, but RV, education, lifestyle, just all of that. So yeah, yeah. They're definitely the leaders. Yeah, it seems like no matter what website I go on, I'm always seeing RV share ads pop up. So you can definitely tell that they're spending their money on marketing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got one of my credit card. I got an email from my Capital One credit card the other day and said, you want an extra 8% back by booking an RV through RV share. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, they're definitely innovators in that aspect. So I'm wondering, like, if someone wants to get into RV rental management, what options do they have? I know you mentioned a franchise. You know, what is that about? Yeah, so we have the, the franchise offer, you know, and basically the cool thing about a franchise is basically it's a proven model. It's got a little system to process it, coaching, mentoring, and everything in place, you know, so that's great. That's one of the questions I get when I'm in like a franchise presentation. Sometimes, like, especially a lot, a lot of people that find us, they're renting their RV and they're loving it. They see the opportunity and they want to scale. And then they typically ask, me, well, you know, why would I sign up with you? What's the advantage of it? Typically what I say is, you know, there's no, we don't have any sort of secret sauce or proprietary method. It's just more years and years ahead of where you are. So if you want to shortcut the cycle of learning and partner up with a group of like-minded individuals that are all doing this together, you know, be able to utilize the power of partnership, which, you know, we have agreements in place with the different platforms and account reps and you know, dealer accounts for parts and all, all, all these different kinds of things. If you want that kind of, you know, family where you get all those benefits and you get the mastermind coaching and everything, that would be uh, the reason why you partner with somebody like Fireside. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. You know, in any business, like entrepreneurship can be really lonely. So to have someone that's doing the same thing that you are and to be able to have that support and people to lean on, I think would be invaluable. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It really is. And, you know, I big into like, I have a coach that coaches me in business. I have a coach that coaches me in marketing. You know, I go to church and I hear a encouraging message from my pastor and it's my spiritual coach and we homeschool our kids. So I'm a coach to my kids. And actually I've been seeing lots of ads on Facebook lately about coaching and they say with in the United States, just all the transformation that's taking place in business and how business is done and, and, you know, how things are being outsourced, you know, to other countries for actually like creating products and this and that. One of the biggest movements taking place is coaching. People are becoming coaches. People are hiring coaches. So to, to be able to pay somebody to gain five, ten, 20 years of experience in a matter of weeks or months. One of his programs that he had, it's called a decade in a day, you know, where hey, you can learn super successful multimillionaire billionaires and gain that knowledge in a week and a month. You know, why wouldn't you make that investment in yourself to get that kind of reward to, to get to whatever your end desire is, you know? Yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. Now, I'm assuming there's some type of fee that goes along with joining the franchise. What options do people have if they don't have any funds available to join a franchise? Are there any options? Yeah, so there's all different kinds of options out there when it comes to franchise. You know, somebody just doesn't have the money to, you know, cut a check to pay a franchise fee. Then there's, you can take money from your retirement, roll in what's called a self-directed Roth IRA, where you get checkbook control and can start a business. There's SBA loan programs out there. We do in-house financing here, personally. Some franchises do, some don't. And honestly, for us, like if you attend our webinar, which typically that's what we tell people is like the best next step if you want to learn more about us. If you attend our webinar at the end, It'll tell you, hey, our franchise startup fee is $50,000. And then we have an offer for those that are attending the webinar. The basic offer says is it depends. So it says, hey, are you already written your RV? You love this? You want to, you know, jump into the franchise? We have an offer for you. And what is the offer? It depends, you know, because for us, it's not all about getting that franchise startup fee. It's about finding the right people that are thinking the same way that we do, that have the same end goals and desires and philosophies about life, family, and goals. So we have all different kinds of offers that we are constantly putting out to people. Say, for instance, you're already in the RV world, like you're an RV storage facility, 
or an RV repair shop, then we have an offer where basically you can actually earn your franchise startup fee. So we'll literally help you start a franchise. It'll be no out-of-pocket money to you. And then we take a percentage of your revenue as it comes in to help pay that fee. And we've done all kinds of different deals. So it's, if you're the right person, if you meet the criteria of what we're looking for in-house, then I'd encourage you to the webinar, fill out the franchise application, and most likely, if you're that person, we have been offered for you. The franchise startup fee isn't going to stop us from work. That sounds great. I'll make sure to link to the webinar in the show notes so anyone that's interested can attend that. And it makes perfect sense to, to partner with businesses that already are in the RV world, like RV shops and RV storage, because especially with RV rental management, I would assume that they can connect with those owners and use those for their fleet. Yeah, yeah, we've got a couple locations that literally all they had to do was partner up with a storage facility and then right there they have, you know, with our credibility and our nationwide trademarking and branding, they're able to just go in, show all of our materials and the storage owner was was completely comfortable with sharing that with their RV storage owners and, you know, presenting the fireside opportunity for the RV rental management. And now I know a lot of traditional RV rental businesses, they have, you know, their own units, they're all privately owned by the business. What advantages are there by doing RV rental management versus owning your own units? I'm a huge fan of the, what I call OPRV, other people's RVs. The biggest reason why is just overhead, keeping your overhead down, you know, so you don't have the payments and the insurance, uh, and the storage fees and the maintenance. And COVID was a great example of this. One of our fleet representatives from the big platforms, him and I have become friends over the years, and he was just sharing stories with me of how many different companies he saw go under that were operating under that model where they kept purchasing RVs and adding inventory, you know. You have a slow month or a slow couple months or, you know, that like how stuff hit with the pandemic, there were everything stopped for a little bit. That could literally put you out of business where if you're using someone else's RV, that they're already used to the payment, they're already used to the insurance, your output generates some extra revenue. It's a very simple um, solution for you to start and scale a business. And really, if you think about it, from the, you know, kind of the other side of it, the peer-to-peer -peer industry has exploded over the last decade with Airbnb, Turo, renting RVs. Heck, I see people out there even renting their pools and their yards and their garages and their tools. And it's just a very sustainable model because it's something you're already used to pay for whatever that asset is or liability if you're not renting it out. So to, to hand it off to a management company such as Fireside and rent it out, it's, it's just such a beautiful model. Yeah, it really does seem like a win-win situation where, you know, the owner of the RV is just earning a passive income at that point, and they don't have to worry about any of the expenses that it's causing them. But that seems great. Exactly. Now, I know a lot of concern right now with the economy and, you know, a possible recession. So where do you see the future of the RV rental industry going? You know, that's that's a good question. I was just talking to someone about that last week. I have Airbnbs and rental properties, and I have boats that I rent out. Stuff. And, you know, one thing I learned in the real estate world years ago, which, you know, real estate's been around forever. Real estate property management companies have been around forever. You know, there's always been renters of real estate. And, and what one of my mentors taught me is, you know, you're always going to have different classes of renters or different classes of properties. So like in the rental world, you know, you have like class A properties, class B properties, class C properties. And then depending on what's going on with the economy, your renters might shift around to the different classes of properties. You know, and I kind of feel that really fits into the RV rental space because going camping is, it's not a necessarily a class A experience. I mean, you can rent yourself quite an amazing RV and do some amazing RV trips. But when you think of like a class A vacation, you know, typically it's more like you're going to Mexico for a week or going to just, you know, you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on a family trip. And, and RV, you know, it's a lot more affordable. So the cool thing about that is, with that being said, is like we experienced during COVID, well, once air, air travel was closed down for a while, we were seeing a lot of renters that would typically go overseas and all that. Well, then they were renting RVs. So, you know, RV camping 
that's, you know, that's what America's great, you know, pastimes or traditions is camping. So I think no matter where the economy is at, you're going to have a market that you're going to serve, you know, whether it's a typical class A, you know, vacationer to the class B, C. You're always going to have a specific market that you're going to serve when it comes to camping. So I think it's going to be fine if you look at the real estate world again, which is kind of how I started this whole point. In the real estate world, commercial real estate, which typically commercial real estate, they they have a very good handle on what's going on, you know, the economy and ups and downs and recessions. There are campgrounds going up all over the place. State parks are adding sites. I was just talking with a guy in Georgia the other day, and he said this state campground is near him and adding like 100 and something sites because they know that demand is not going anywhere, that demand is only growing. Campgrounds are selling for like an all time high right now. So I think those are all good indicators that this is a pretty good, I don't want to say recession proof, but recession, I guess, stabilized, recession resistant market to be in, you know, the art rental industry. Yeah, that makes sense. And I've seen many reports as well, you know, that would, you know, go along with what you're saying. I know Camping World, they just opened like their second hundred store. And they're continually, you know, grabbing up new properties. So the fact that they're doing that shows you that camping is going to continue to grow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And too, like I've seen recently on the back end of our website, new signups that are coming in. I mean, these are people with 2023 RVs, which a lot of people bought those brand new RVs, you know, the last couple of years during COVID and stuff. So now what we have is we have a lot of people with RVs. There's over 11 million people around the country with RVs that bought it during COVID or just people in general. We only use them only a couple times a year. So there's a lot of inventory out there that tough for grabs for the art rental management companies. And it's just such a blue ocean. I mean, you're not going to reach out to somebody and ask them about managing your RV and they're going to say, oh my gosh, you're the third person this week to ask me about managing my RV. It's such a blue ocean. It's such a ground floor opportunity. RV Shares uh, CEO, uh, John Gray, had just said in a, a webinar that he did recently that um, the RV rental management space or the management industry hasn't even really poked its head into this industry yet. He comes from home away, uh, you know, where people rent their, their homes and he knows the management piece is always an integral part of all these industries. So... It's just such a great ground floor opportunity. I, I'm super blessed to have been doing this since 2016 now and be the nation's first franchise. And we're just excited to find the right people uh, that want to come join the Fireside family. Yeah, that's great. And hopefully this podcast, some more people will find you and hear this amazing opportunity. Um, now, one other thing I want to ask you, because it is RV Rental Secrets podcast, um, what's like one secret or tip you can share for people that are looking to get started in the RV rental industry? Um, something that could really help them move forward in their business. Yeah. So if somebody just coming into the business and they're saying, Gar, give me a tip or secret, or, you know, like, how do I do this? Probably the biggest tip I would give is actually give me something the platforms are going to share with you too, because they know that gives you your best chance of getting bookings. So I'll share what they would say, and then I'll share what I would say on my end, too, as an out, outside of the platform looking at uh, Number one is, like, get phenomenal pictures under your RV, like, really go all out, staging it, taking really good pictures, lighting, opening up the shades, you know, throwing some pillows, like, painting a picture for the potential renter in as many details and descriptions as you can. That's, and that's something the platforms are going to tell you as well. You know, a picture, like they say, a picture is a thousand words, a thousand words or whatever. And then the other thing I would say is, is don't sell yourself short. A lot of people jump into this. They see all these people on here and the platforms are they're kind of pushy towards us. Like, oh yeah, just do a two night minimum, you know, and yeah, make sure you start your, your rate low so you get, you know, inquiries and, you know, don't try not to charge you much. I would say the exact opposite. Set your standards high, set your nightly minimum high. Instead of trying to like join the rat race of a lot of other people that are in their RVs, set the standards, offer a very quality product, and, and go after a specific renter. Go after mom who's planning the summer vacation. So even if, you know, I always say five to seven night minimum, and that scares a lot of people, even my franchisees. Even if you start up at a 
four night minimum. That way too, because what's going to happen? You do a two night minimum, it's going to suck the life out of you because you're going to be all, every Friday you're going to be delivering your RV, and every Sunday you're going to be picking it up. So you're going to be losing your weekend, and it's just to me that doesn't make sense to operate from that standpoint uh, because you want to have fun doing this. Yeah, you want to make money, but you're going to be selling yourself short at a ton of your point if you do that. Yeah, that's a great point. Like anyone that's just starting out, they should really look at it from a business aspect and how they can be the most profitable. And I think if someone starts out by doing that, then, you know, the possibilities aren't going to be endless. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week. I think all of us will have learned so much from your experience. I know you mentioned the webinar. Would That would be the best place to find out more about the franchise opportunity. Yeah, definitely. We do a, a webinar every Thursday at 7 o'clock. You can jump on there and register if you're not able to attend it. Uh, I believe after the webinar is over, we'll send out a link to the recording so you can watch it. That's definitely the best way to get a full picture of, we call it our master class of the three secrets to, to starting an RV rental business. But that's definitely the best next step. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome.